Good morning. Okay guys, just putting my pants on. Um, so, welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be a crazy day in my life. Just a normal day basically. I feel like every day is crazy. But it is currently 9.18 and I have to head to the salon. I've got three appointments today. I'm gonna be doing a little vlog style of my day in my life. I feel like every time I'm recording something, I'm in my closet because I usually spend 99% of my time in here. And I'm not lying whenever I say that. You literally, this month, I've organized and re-cleaned my closet twice. So I am about to head to the salon. I've got to leave a little bit early. My first client isn't until 10, but it snowed the past two days, so I'm gonna have to like scrape my car, do all that. I freaking hate the snow. More than you'll ever know. What shoes to wear? Should I spice up this outfit? This is my outfit for today. Corduroy, bluish, um, button down, Louis Vuitton belt, some Dickies pants. I've been wearing this bracelet every day. If you can, I don't know if you guys can tell, but it says Stu Heart Styles. It kind of matches my Stu's crew tattoo with the heart, but it says Stu Styles. And my niece actually made this for me. Um, she is like a little entrepreneur. She's a little me. Oh, I'll wear these shoes. I'm gonna wear these shoes because they have blue in them. But um, my sister told me that my niece went to her and was like, mom, I've got a business opportunity, basically. She like pitched her like she was on Shark Tank for Christmas this year. She got like a bracelet maker. So she's been making bracelets and selling them. And she's gonna like send herself to Disney World or something cute like that. Oh my God. That is my tag trash. I keep a little mini trash can in my closet to throw away tags from new clothes. Innovative. Already had my first cup of coffee for today. And you guys, I've been making coffee at home because I'm trying to be responsible. I spend so much money. Oh my God, why are these being so hard today? <sighs> I spend so much money every week eating out and or buying coffee every day. So what I've been doing is staying at home, cooking at home, making my own coffee at home. And I honestly freaking love it. It's so convenient and it's the best, but I do have to shut up and I've got to get going because I'm gonna be late for work if not because I've gotta scrape all the snow off my car. So I'll see you whenever I'm at the salon. We have a few appointments. We have two move ups and a collar and a move up. So stay tuned. So I have just got to the salon and I'm gonna start off by setting up. I'm pretending that I'm hydrated right here because I never have time to drink any water throughout my day. But like I was saying, I'm just gonna start off by setting up. The first client is a move up. She is a regular, so I know that she's going to be using brown beads, brown thread. So I'm gonna go ahead and have all of her string prepared, all the beads prepared, all the tools that I need for this service. I just love coming to the salon like 30 minutes early, setting up recently. Usually I would show up about 15 minutes and I feel like I was just a little rushed, but getting there early is like so a part of my routine now. I love showing up, getting everything prepped, being able to do it nice and relaxed and slow instead of getting there right before the appointment to where I am just like in a panic and a frenzy mode. So this client is just has one row. I actually don't do her color, but she does come to me for extensions and she's been my client for a few years now. She's one of my favorites. I love seeing her. I feel like we can all relate to having that like those clients that we just like so look forward to seeing. So what she has is one row of machine wefts and I don't know why the lighting is kind of weird. Her extensions look like they're like splotchy and a little bit crazy, but I swear whenever it's styled you guys, it's not gonna look like that at all. Um, but like I was saying is she has one row and she has the color of the Lauren, which is going to be like a rooted, like soft, like almost like dirty blonde in a way. I feel like it's more like a level seven, eight. And she has machine wefts. Like I said before, I'm gonna be matching her beads and thread to that root color. So brown beads, brown thread. I am actually get to the point where I'm pretty fast with extensions. I think maybe because I teach it, I preach it, I love them, and I do them all the time every day in the salon, that this service I'll always book out for just an hour. And that's gonna include her coming in, getting her draped, getting her a drink, removing the row, cleaning up my section, doing my beadwork, and then doing my stitching and styling, styling that client. The way that I like to charge for this is going to be $100 a row, or if it was a bag of tapes, I would charge $100 for a bag of tapes, and that's for install and for move ups. 
Every service I do, I like to include a style just so they feel their best whenever they leave. They can go out into the world, start her days, feeling really nice and pretty. And I did end up doing two move ups this day, but my second client actually told me that she wasn't comfortable being on camera. So I totally respect that and I understand that. So I only recorded this client. But back to what I'm doing, every time I curl my client, I'll do a soft hold hairspray and brush out those curls with a wide tooth comb. I just feel like it separates them really pretty. Something else I like to do whenever I'm styling is just put a little light mist of soft hold hairspray at the top, comb down those baby hairs, and just make everything look really, really nice. And you can see she's like a really, really rooted, um, bright blonde on the ends. And I honestly do love this color, even though I feel like it's more of like the ombre trend, which you don't see a lot of anymore, but I don't hate it. So this was my first client. I didn't film my second client. And then guess where we're back at? The closet, <laughs> where I'm always at. It's so funny because a lot of the times I am in my closet whenever I think to vlog or whenever I'm like getting ready for bed or like anything like that. And people always comment or reply and they're like, why are you always in your closet? Why are you doing a story time on TikTok from your closet? And the truth is I was in the closet for 18 years. So this is my safe space. <laughs> Not exactly, but um, actually, I, it's not that I forgot to vlog yesterday, it's that I got no-showed. Well, technically not no-showed. I had a client who had to reschedule, but in the beginning of the year, this is February, whenever I'm filming this, it, January, February are going to be the toughest months ever in the salon. It's been like that since I've been in the game. I remember growing up in my mom's salon that it was the same thing then. It's been like this for years and people always say it doesn't have to be like that. Pre-book your clients. But the truth of the matter is people are going to cut back in January and at the beginning of the year, actually. The reason being is holidays just happened. Everyone just spent a crap ton of money on buying presents for every freaking person in their family, their kids, their husbands, their wives, their freaking cousins, aunts, sisters. What's that song by Christina Aguilera? And it's like, tell my mother, my brother, my sister, and my fans. Literally, they're buying gifts for everyone. People are having New Year's resolutions of not to spend as much money. So people are going to try to cut back on expenses like nails, hair, any kind of trade service. It sucks for us because as hairstylists, we're going through the same thing. We have people who, we just bought gifts for everyone. We just spent a bunch of money on Christmas. We just had time off for Christmas. And if we don't go to work or if we have clients that's not showing up or having to reschedule or pushing off because of their New Year's resolutions or because they don't have enough money, it's affecting all of us. And it is a hard time right now, I feel like. I'm just trying to decide on what shoes I'm wearing today. But it's also a hard time right now too for all hairstylists because freaking Everything, the price of everything is going up. Hair color, everything. Inflation is at 17%. I just read an article on it. And I know you probably like Stu reads articles on inflation. Yeah, dude, because it's affecting all of us. So basically, if we even want to make the same money that we do now that we did last year, we need to raise our prices by 17%. Ideally, that's not an option. If I went out and I raised my prices 17%, I would lose more clients than I would have coming in. But it's the truth of the matter. You see it all over TikTok, you see it all over the news, you see it on Instagram probably too. Inflation is impacting us hairstylists so much. I think I'm gonna go with these guys. And it's not that, I mean, I'm any kind of money expert, but even as a hairstylist, whether you're commission, whether you're booth rent, whether anything, you're going to be affected by this because we are all considered small business owners. But popping back to why I couldn't finish vlogging yesterday is because my last client of the day, she actually ended up texting me and saying she broke her neck. Awful. Well, she didn't break her neck. She said she's gonna tell me the details today. I told her she can come in the next day because I ended up having to reschedule someone again. And I feel like I'm, I'm getting, it's fine. She texts me, everything's right, but the day of the last minute no-shows, the rescheduling with front desk, whenever you get your text reminder, I am so over it. But unfortunately, it's just something that's always been a part of the beauty business, especially when you're a hairstylist, and it's something that's always going to be a part of the beauty business. And I wanted to share this too, because everyone's always like, you're so lucky you get to do this. You guys, Instagram is a highlight reel. You're going to see all of the good, the positive the things, the good hair, transformations, all the things that I want to show off. The ones, the things that anybody wants to show off. No one's posting like a root retouch and they're like, ooh, transformation. It's always gonna be the most crazy hair transformations. It's always going to be me traveling for work on Instagram for, to teach classes. It's always going to be the fun stuff and positive stuff that I wanna like put out into the universe. But as 
every other hairstylist in the world, rescheduling and no shows happens to me and everyone else. It's just the way it is. Sorry, putting my shoe on. And just because I've hit like a certain amount of followers, it doesn't mean that my life is gonna be any easier behind the chair as a hairstylist, as a business owner, as anything. Stu Styles, LLC, ain't just because I got a K by my name on Instagram and TikTok don't mean that I don't have the same struggles and things that I go to. And I think that it's something just to normalize. I'm struggling, you're struggling, it's that time of year where everything kind of sucks. And I do think a, a conversation worth having. Dolce & Gabbana, a little spritz spritz. So if you guys are experiencing the same thing, comment down below, let's have a conversation about it. But it is currently Wednesday, yesterday was Tuesday when I was filming, so I have two clients today, um, two move ups, both colors, so I'm excited to go and share those transformations with you guys. So I'm up to my OG client, so it's not gonna be something crazy, but it's, it's gonna be a good video to watch. So continuing on to day two, let's go to the salon. I sounded like that TikTok, to the salon. Okay, starting off, I want to clarify that this is not the client I was talking about and the client that I was talking about. I absolutely adore her. I feel like I was just in a little rant because rescheduling and no shows have been happening to everyone in the salon lately and it's just driving me crazy. But it was nothing directed to her. This is not her either, but this client is, she has three bags of tape in, so I'm gonna start off by removing those. You can see that her hair is super short. This client came to me probably like six months ago, and it was her first time with me, and she told me that she had a really bad experience with her last stylist, that her hair got really, really damaged whenever she was trying to be solid blonde, and she honestly just has a lot of damage. So it's been about three or four move ups between since we did her color last and she just needs a little something something to brighten it up so her first time coming to see me we actually ended up deciding that her best bet is to give her hair a break from bleaching she was like a all over literally like ashy level 10 no dimension at all so we ended up adding in some low light so we are just going to be refreshing that now that way she can get longevity out of her hair color and not have to color it as much so it can get into a healthier state. So I'm going to be starting off with a partial. I'm mainly doing baby lights, but then I'm throwing in a few low lights in there here and there, but I'm not pulling them all the way through her ends just to keep that root broken up so it is very lived in and she can get longevity out of this color. Now the formula that I am using is going to be Wella Blondor in 15 volume. I'm just saturating that on her new growth. I'm not dragging it down to her blonde ends. I'm kicking those out of the foil because I want to be as safe as possible. Possible. Her goal going back to her backstory is that she, we are trying to get her hair to a nice healthy state So she's got extensions that she can use and utilize having long hair until she can grow her own hair out And honestly, I say she looks so freaking good So I don't want anyone to come at me in the comments and be like why are you coloring her hair? We literally hardly ever color her hair, but every few months so she's growing out her hair That's her journey I told you a little about what I'm doing and also the low light formula that I'm going to be going in is 7g 6n just because because I feel like that's going to be matching her low lights and her extensions. The two color extensions that she has in is going to be two bags of the Freddy, which is a bright dimensional blonde, and it is one of my favorite tones. It has been purple shampooed a little bit between her at home and me in between her move ups, and then she's got one bag of the stew, so a total of three bags. So this service is a partial highlight and a three bag retape. I charge $100 a bag of tapes, kind of like I was saying about that client yesterday. So her move up is going to be $300, and then my partial highlight, which is just going to be mainly the face frame and the mohawk sectioning is going to be $120. So this service comes out to being $420 and I'm going to be taking the time while she's processing really nice and slow with that 15 volume to be retaping those three bags and then we're going to be rinsing her out. And as far as her face frame goes, you guys, I'm not doing anything too crazy. I'm taking a few slices off of her hairline, working my way back into that mohawk sectioning that I was doing. I'm obviously utilizing slices just so it can be a nice bright pop in the front. And I'm going to be easily, as I'm working my way into the back corner of that section, more towards where I've already foiled, if that makes any sense, I'm going to be doing little broken up baby lights just so it can start blending in with where she's going to have a lot of dimension. And I did save this section for last just so we can keep the health of her hair and protect these more fragile pieces that are towards the front.
So she has finished processing really nice and slow. I've already got all those tape ins retaped. I didn't include footage of that because I feel like it's kind of boring. But if you guys do want to see like a start to finish, um, full like bag of tape retapes, I don't mind sharing that. I feel like I can't share too much whenever it comes to Beaded West because people do pay a lot of money to come to our trainings. And if you are interested in getting certified and doing um, Beaded Weft extensions, learning all about hand tie, J tie, um, machine wefts, all the different ways that we like to offer it, the link is always going to be in my description box but I've taken her back to the shampoo bowl now that she has processed getting into what I'm actually doing and I washed her hair once with um, seven seconds by unite the reason I didn't use a clarifying shampoo is because I did use a low light formula in this and I don't want to strip it out at all I'm going through and rooting her with shades EQ and the gel developer with 6t to cancel out any warmth and 7nb to help neutralize everything and then I don't have footage of her being toned because you guys my camera freaking died but what I did tone her with was more of a neutral and warm formula to help keep everything super bright so i used 9 and w and a little bit of 9m i didn't use anything to counteract any warmth because her hair has been so ashy and so blonde for so long i feel like it doesn't need it always kind of reverts back to that she does ash it out a little bit with purple shampoo and her extensions are more of like a bright blonde and it doesn't have too much ash to it so you're gonna see that that ended up matching perfectly and i actually did leave that on for a total of 10 minutes both the root and the all over toner so now i've started her retape process and i'm applying those three tapes the way that I like to do this is bricklay them up the head because I feel like they look the most natural. So you, you saw I did one to the right, one to the left, and now I'm going a little bit above that section and doing one in the middle. Now she does have three bags of tapes, which can seem a lot, especially for her length, but she's going to be needing it because she actually does have a lot of hair and her hair is super short, as you can see. And you guys just wait. I don't feel like you're going to be able to believe how well this blends. I didn't end up recording my next client because it was super dark in the salon and the lighting was super weird, but look at this after. I cannot believe believe like can you believe that this is the girl who came in with the short short hair i can't i love her i love this transformation and like always let me know what videos you guys want to see in the comments below and thanks for watching you guys can always connect with me over on instagram i'm always a dm away over there oh yeah like and subscribe so you don't miss any of the fun hair transformations and youtube videos that i have coming up and there's a little forehead kiss go kill it in the salon this week